Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Welcome guys Today we're going to talk about filioque And why is this important Stay tuned guys Make sure you watch the end Okay uh, Now what is the filioque Okay This is the thing that broke the east and the west together This is like the schism You must have read this well The schism Okay The eastern orthodox and the western catholics this is one of the doctrines that made them separate and they are no more in communion with each other. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to explain to you what it is all about and uh, what is the position of the Protestants that out of all of this, what is all of this all about. And then I'll give you some tips that I've learned from Sapiens Institute. Remember, the course I've been taking, actually, I took, is, is this course is one of the courses they're offering there. It's one of the topics that they discussed and I learned a lot from it. So go on to that uh, Sapiens Institute if you really want to learn stuff. And uh, I will just show you some things I've learned generally. Now, let's get into the video. Now, so what is the filioque? It means and the son. So what is it all about? Now, there's something called eternal generation. Eternal generation means the father eternally caused the son and the Holy Spirit to exist. Okay, so how it, it uh, the mechanism of how it works, this is where the difference comes in. So the Eastern guys, they believe the father caused the son, okay, and the father caused the Holy Spirit generated the son and generated the holy spirit so this is the eastern uh, way of explaining it so this is the uh begetting the father beget the son and the holy spirit proceeds from the father that is the eastern understanding of this whole thing now the western guys on the other hand they believe the father caused the son and then the father and the son caused the holy spirit this is where the filioque comes in and the holy spirit uh, and the son, they cause the Holy Spirit to exist. Now, you'll be like, what is this all about? Why is this a big deal? Now, let me tell you, it's a big deal, a real big deal. So, this causes them to like differ with, with each other and they're like, no, we, dif we, we deny that. Both of them believe in Trinity, okay? And this is why in the next part, I'll show you the mystery breaker. If someone wants to appeal to the mystery, this is how you know, I told you. How do you know when someone is appealing to mystery? You look at their explicit statement, their positive claims. That's how you know. You cannot get to uh, their inner, uh, what's it called, beliefs, but you can see what they say about themselves or their criteria that they've laid down. You can use that to judge them. Now, so the mystery breaker we'll discuss that later. Let me just quote to you one thing that one of the Eastern guys said about, you think this is a joke? They said, this is really serious stuff. You have to believe. Now, what did you notice? The father is the only one causing people here. Only the father caused the son and only the father caused the Holy Spirit. Whereas in this case, the father caused the son, and then the father and, and the son, they caused the Holy Spirit. That is the distinction. Uh, okay, so now, l just listen to what one of the Eastern guys said about this. His name is Photios. He said this, and I quote, If one admits of two causes within the super essential triad, where then is the much, in, uh, much aimed on God, befitting the majesty of the monarchy, will not the godlessness of polytheism, be righteously introduced under the guise of Christianity and it went further. The point that he's making is that if you deny that there's only one cause here, that is the father is causing the two persons here. If you say then the father and the Holy Spirit join together to cause the Holy Spirit, they are saying it's literally charging the West with polytheism. Okay? So what is the what can we derive from these as Muslims? Look at this, what's going on? All of them believe in the Trinity, and we'll get to the Protestant letter too. They all believe in the Trinity, yet they are making positive claims. This guy from the East is saying, if you say there are two causes, remember here, we have only one cause, the Father. Here, we have the Father causing the Son, and then the, this is the first cause, and then the Father and the Son again come together to cause the Holy Spirit. He's saying, now you have two causes in the, in the triad, that if you say this, that it is literally polytheism, disguised under Christianity, Okay, so he's charging them with politism, and the West, they, they want to affirm this too. So I'll show you how all of them uh, come together. But the point is, don't forget that. Now, do, uh, the Eastern guys, don't they know that the Western guys, they believe in the divine simplicity, in mystery, and all of that? Yet, they are saying, if you believe this, you're a politist, literally. This is politism, or it's closer to politism, disguised under Christianity. This is how you know that. There are some criteria that you cannot uh, go about. And I'll show you uh, the other view also. But the point is that, look at this. The Western guys, with all their mystery and all of that, 
the Eastern guys can be like, no, if you affirm two causes, you're polytheist. You have to affirm the monarchy of the father. Because then the emphasis now will show you they are the main uh, monotheistic factor for the Eastern guys. Their own, the, the whole of uh, mostly in the Eastern uh, camp, you will find them tending towards the monarchy of the father. They want to emphasize the father is the, is the monarch, is the sole cause, is the one that causes the Son and Holy Spirit to exist. Okay, so eternal generation is their thing. And they have to affirm one cause. If you say there are two causes, they think that is polytheistic. Okay, no matter what you do. So the West, they don't see this as a problem. They think there's no big deal in thinking that there are two causes, like in this case. So their own monotheistic factor is affirming some kind of uh, weak personhood. Meaning, they also, okay, so the Eastern guys are charging the Western, the Catholics, with polytheism if they think that there are two causes in the Godhead. Now, the Western guys, they charge the Eastern guys, especially the contemporary uh, theologians that affirm this kind of uh, Western conception of, uh, of, the, of Trinity because them, they affirm a kind of one self, Trinity. And uh, these guys, they affirm the kind of three self, Trinity. So, the, these one self Trinitarians, they will charge the three self who, who are mostly Eastern guys with politism too, tritism, that if you think the persons are real persons in the modern sense of the word, meaning the way you understand like persons, this is what these guys are saying. They're saying it's like a universal essence. Each one of them is a person. So you have three selves in there. These guys are saying there's only one self. Whereas, uh, where the persons are not persons in the modern sense of the world, they are just like aspects of the one self. This is what these, these guys are saying. So they say, if you don't believe this, if you think the persons are real persons, like in the modern sense of the world, such that you have three selves, you have polities. The Western guys are charging them with politism too. With all this, so eternal generation doesn't matter to, to these guys. They are saying, uh, you think because you are saying one cause is going to save you from this objection? Of course not. If you say there are three persons, whether they cause themselves or not, they are charging them with tritism. This is one thing I want you to get. These guys are charging them with... Uh, Tritheism, based on their own criteria of eternal generation, that they have to be one cause in there. The Eastern guys are charging the Western guys. Okay, The Western guys are charging them with Tritheism because they think the persons are like three selves, three individuals in there. Okay, So they are charging them with Tritheism too. Now, I hope you get that between the East and the West. Now, let's go to the Protestants. The Protestants, they don't have to be part of all of this. They can just say, you know what? And I'll get to it, uh, the Sapiens Institute, the advice I have for you guys. Okay, Now, the protesters can be like, we don't believe in any of this, we don't want to be part of all of this, we believe in the scripture, and all of that, right? But they still believe in the Trinity, right? They believe in the Trinity, and by the way, historically, the Protestants have tended more towards the West, the Catholics, than the, the East, to be fair. So, the Protestants, they, most of them believe in the Filioque too. They believe in this, uh, and the Son, generate the Holy Spirit together. They believe in two causes. So the Eastern guys will still charge them with tritheism too, in a way. Okay. Now, some Protestants have now said, you know what? We don't want to be part of all of this. We deny any causal notion between the persons. Okay. We, do, we deny any causal uh, relationship going on here. We want to say that the persons exist eternally on their own. Okay. This is what people like William Lane Craig and uh, some other people like Ryan Mullins, they believe now. The problem with this is that both the church fathers, uh, the the East and the West, they will charge them with. In fact, this is the one that was charged with tritheism the most. In fact, when they if they if someone talks about this, you're a tritheist. Why? Because you are believe you believe there are three ultimate principles. So the church fathers, even the Eastern guys, they are saying if you believe in three ultimate principles, you're a polytheist. You're a tritheist. Because remember what the Eastern guys are trying to do. They are trying to affirm one ultimate principle that causes the two other ones now if you you say there's no causal notion which where each person exists independently of themselves then you have three ultimate principles they say if you have three ultimate principles you try it is both of them will charge you with tritheism so there's just tritheism all over the place what is this all about as a muslim you're like which one are you going to take now to get out of this problem okay all of them are charging themselves with tritheism where is monotheism out of all of this I've not seen it, actually. I've not. Okay? The only one that seemed to be, like, monotheistic in a way is this one of the one self, but that one has its own problems too. So, guys, I hope you have seen this. Any which way you take, there are some people that are going to charge you with polytheism. 
Have you ever seen someone charging the Muslims with polytheism? It doesn't even make sense. Because our belief in God is just straightforward and it's simple. You believe in one God, that's it, right? No. Uh, I told you, I will tell you. Uh, but you remember, without, if you appeal to mystery and you believe in two causes, these guys will charge you with tritheism. So mystery doesn't work. Divine simplicity doesn't work. All those things I told you, I told you it doesn't work. Can you see why it doesn't work now? If you believe in the three ultimate principles and you say hey, there's mystery and uh, there's... um divine simplicity and all those things they will charge you with tritheism still it doesn't it doesn't protect you from tritheism objection okay so i hope you get that now sapiens institute uh where i get i got most of the information about this they uh they laid out a particular thing that i haven't been paying attention to okay especially the last part so when you want to use this the practical usage so I, I make a video, but I don't tell you how to use it, okay? So that's one thing I will be adding to my video. How can you use this in the tower? How can you use it to your Christian friend, okay? How can you talk to somebody? How can you get the conversation started, okay? So the first thing they said is you need to ask questions, okay? You need to ask, who are you talking to? Is he an Eastern Orthodox person, a Western Catholic person, or a Protestant? Three of them have different views that I've just shown you right here. You need to know the person you're talking to so that you know how to go on with the discussion. So, by the way, you can just ask, do you believe the Father is the sole cause of the Holy Spirit or is the Father and the Son that cause the Holy Spirit? You can use it to know their position and then you go further and make the objections that we've laid out. Or you can ask if they're Protestants, meaning you see Protestants, they don't care. They don't have to commit to any of this. The Protestants are free. They can just say, you know what, we deny it. I deny eternal generation. I deny. They can deny anything, these guys. So you need to know them if you are talking to them so that you can understand. Now, you build your argument. So once you ask the question and someone gives you uh, a particular reply, you build your argument and then you lead to your conclusion. Don't go all about the place. You need to know, okay, this is what you are trying to achieve and you make your argument. So if you ask someone, do you believe uh, our beliefs has to, be to make sense? Do you think our beliefs have to be rational and logical? And the person says, no, I believe in mysteries. Just go, man. Go away. You don't need to like uh, talk too much. You don't need to force somebody. You just go, man. He cannot understand. He will never accept. Even if your argument makes sense, he's going to reject it anyway. So why don't you just ask questions? If you see someone that is ready to listen, make your argument to them. And then you show them the conclusion. So ask you, ask questions, build your argument, okay? And then you go to the conclusion. So that's one thing I've learned from this. And uh, so I've shown you, if you think uh, anything, if you have any questions, put it in the comment section, guys. So see you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.